Carl, uh, thanks for coming along today. It's uh, a pleasure to have you here. No worries. Um, today I've got uh, Carl Hartman from Tomando. And Carl, uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what Tomando does? Oh, look, to put it in a sentence is always, uh, <laughs> it's always a bit of a task. Um, look, I guess, you know, in, in Australian context, um, if you think of us as the, the web jet of freight, um, however, our product's a lot more like PayPal being a gateway product that embeds within um, different e-commerce environments. Right. Um, so, you know, in a nutshell, we help um, businesses, big and small, deliver things cheap using a multitude of different carriers. Frontline stores. Frontline stores. Okay, right. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, why you started the business in the, uh, in the digital space. Well, I guess the, the roots of the business come from when I was, uh, oh, look at my university days, working with, um, with JB Hi-Fi. And um, look, back then, um, you know, plasma TVs used to cost 10 grand. Um, funnily enough, it was a very rebate-driven business, uh, with the TVs being sold at costs, and I think the rebates were only about $150. Right. And um, you know, back then we, we had a, a, a small national footprint, like generally one very large store per city. And what used to happen is people we used to come in from uh, out of metro and regional locations and say, "Wow, this is three grand cheaper. How much is it going to cost to deliver?" So we had two major contracts. Um, we won with TNT, one with Star Trek. Mm -hmm. And um, the sales guys would go speak to the storeroom guys. They'd call up, they'd get a price, they'd find out one, and then they'd go back and tell the consumer. So the consumer goes, well, you know, the $400 delivery fee is still cheaper than, I, you know, I can buy it locally. Let's ship it up. But when they go to book it in, they'd call the, the chosen carrier, and funnily enough, half of them would say, oh, well, sorry, we only do business to business. That's a consumer delivery. We can't do that. So then you call the other company and what they do is, oh, we can do it, but at least you go on this special service and therefore the price goes up. And if you only made a $150 rebate on a TV, you sure hope you sold some cables. <laughs> right. So, and, you know, starting to think about selling particularly bulkier goods online, yeah. um, you know, it was a bit scary of, in terms of how do you physically do it, selling anything bigger than a CD because it's, you know, uh, the price can vary so much depending on where it's going. So I guess we saw a bit of a uh, gap in the market and, I had a foray shortly after into online retail selling homewares. And, oh, did you, you say you actually had your own yeah, store? Yeah, so um, sold, okay. on, sold on eBay. Um, I think it only lasted a few months because I got a bit frustrated. And lo and behold, the first thing I sold was a 40 kilo stone Buddha. And I remember being pretty excited and taking it down to the local post office only to get laughed at. And they're like, what do you mean it's too heavy? I said, it's too heavy. You can't post it. So I said, who can help me? They're like, well, we can't help you. So, you know, Googled away. And half the transport companies back then didn't even have a website. Uh, then I got the you know, trusty yellow pages out because um, people were still in that. So how long ago, <laughs> so how long ago was this? Oh, look, conceptually this was uh, probably about almost 10 years. Okay, right. So it's, it's, a, it's a while ago. Okay. <laughs> so anyways, and um, lots changed since then, thankfully. Um, right. You know, called away and what we found is a lot of, you, you naturally will um, go towards some of the larger companies and yep. you know, not having an account, particularly if you're with very small volume. Um, not many were interested in trading with you, so right. um, just found there was an absolute massive gap, and uh, particularly if you had everything from you know an envelope size to some furniture, um, you know you need a bit of a different way to, to do it, and an easy way to manage it. Right. So you saw an opportunity in the marketplace that wasn't being met by the existing uh, delivery companies. Absolutely. Curious. Yeah. Okay. So you start Tomando, and uh, the name Tomando, where does that come from? I think it's a rather interesting story behind the name. Yeah, well look, we did a, a lot of homework. For us, there was a very lo long R&D and um, I guess business planning cycle before yep. we actually launched. Um, one of the things we did was when we were analysing our case studies of successful brands uh, around the world, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, that stood out most for us was uh, you need to have good brand equity. Um, you know, even some of the... Um, you know, the largest brands we know have had trouble expanding overseas because for us, we wanted to build a global platform. Um, so we started with Australia as a target, target market because it, so, um, it was a, almost a perfect test market being yeah. so big with so little people. Um, but, you know, you don't want to do a Google and rock up to ch ch China and you have phonetical issues with, um, you know, a very large percentage of the global market not being able to pronounce the L. So we commissioned a six-month phonetic study looking at all the different vowels and consonants that couldn't be said by major linguistics groups. We also had a business rule where we had to have a .com address and we had to be mm -hmm. able to secure all the subsidiary um, TLDs, so uh, the .au's, the, the .co.uk's, the .cn's, because um, you, know, you don't want to have a real estate problem at year three because when you start to expand and get your um, bit of wind uh, behind the brand, um, all of a sudden you hit roadblocks. So um, for us, what came back, um, you know, almost anything in English is gone, and if you want yep. anything less than sort of seven letters, 
uh, otherwise get the checkbook out. And, but for us, we also found a lot of the English sounding words have phonetical issues when you're going over speeds, um, spe specifically to uh, a lot of the Asian dialects and a lot of the, the Russian Slavic languages. Yeah. So for us, um, Tamando was what came up. Um, it did become one of the most expensive, I told you so. <laughs> right. <laughs> being my, my, uh, my wife being Spanish, <laughs> and said, what about Tamando? It means I send to you. <laughs> but um, in a roundabout way, um, okay. look, you know, we, it, it was something that had a, a, a meaning back to sending, which is literally, I mean, I send to you. Mm -hmm. um, it can be said by every major linguistic group. Sounds cool in English once you get your tongue around it the first time. Um, yep. And, you know, the other thing to consider as well in the US, which is for us is a major expansion market, um, you know, you, in about, by 2020 you can have more people speaking Spanish as their first language than, than English. Right. So it's, that for us, um, you know, that's an important market and being able to reach a specific um, part of the um, the populace there. Um, Quite important. Have, yeah, so just like, um, and also, you know, you've got 20 markets around the world that, 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 that um, speak Spanish as well. Okay, so really you're sort of as a global company. From day one. From day one. <laughs> wow, okay. And with the internet being basically a global platform, and the web, um, and an online store can be a, a global store, basically. Yeah, look, I mean... Which I think some retailers are still trying to get their head around. They don't understand that uh, they can actually set up from day one to distribute globally and uh, a lot of companies uh, online stores aren't getting that yet are they? Uh, absolutely and um, look the, the world truly is flat and um, yeah. you know the more you streamline um, the more you understand it you know people can come from anywhere I mean you just go into your Google Analytics and you'll see in the back end and you know some countries you haven't even heard of people somehow find you yeah. but um, look I think a lot of retailers do make the mistake of just shutting the door outside of that because they put it too hard and look there's some you know mainly that's due to the, the delivery costs around the world, yeah. um, but there's all sorts of things that you, you can do to, to reduce those costs, even, even internationally. Right. Um, and, you know, it's also just getting your mix right to, um, um, you know, to support that. Okay. So, what, when I f first met you just yeah. uh, a couple months ago, what impressed me about you was your passion for your, uh, for your business and uh, the niche in which you operate. What's been your biggest challenge in setting up uh, Tamando? Look, I think like anyone in e-commerce at the moment, um, the biggest challenge definitely is around the educational aspects. Right. Um, you know, you traditionally have a lot of senior decision makers in some of the more established businesses that have a certain way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So you need to, without undermining people, <laughs> um, tell them that there's a, big, uh, there's a better, easier, and often a cost-saving way of, of doing something. Um, so education has been education. Uh, one of your major challenges. Yeah, and I guess that's with the established side businesses. With emerging businesses, it's just getting to them at the right part of the decision cycle. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think, you know, you and I have both talked about it, is that what a lot of people do is they'll go out and spend 25, 50 grand on a website, and then it's finished and they haven't even thought about delivery, which is, you know, just one of the fundamental pillars of an e-commerce business, yeah. um, if you're if selling physical product, that is. So what's been your biggest win, Tomando? Oh, look, it's... You know, I think we've, to use a good analogy, I think we've invented the surfboard at the time of the first wave. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's particularly one win. Um, look, for, for me, I think the most reward comes from just watching businesses grow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's a small business and they, we, we see them sell their first item and then a year later they're doing, you know, three, four thousand orders a month, or whether it's working with a large business, um, someone like Anaconda, um, where they're established retailer, but you're, I guess, helping them through, helping them through the um, you know, their online journey because it is a bit of a learning curve, particularly mm -hmm. if you've been a bricks and mortar retailer and then all of a sudden you're into online. Um, you know, I think we're, we're a transactional business so we take um, a very strong partnership approach with all our clients because, um, you know, quite frankly, if they, just like Google, just like eBay and PayPal, if people don't transact, we don't make any money. And you become very <laughs> integrated into very integrated. their business, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So where do you see mobile uh, for you in terms of... Uh, the future. Yeah, well, mobile's on, on our roadmap this year. Um, mm -hmm. For us, um, to send something, you always need a bit of paper <laughs> in most cases. So right. we, we see it more as an engagement tool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being able to communicate in absolute real time using push technology and being able to get that one to one communication um, you know, very cost effectively because it's all through the cloud. I mean, almost everyone has a smartphone. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I think like, an app is just such a paranoid um, component. Um, of an e-commerce strategy these days, but um, it's more of a, an active communication tool. I mean, that's where like I, I 
basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we're starting to do uh, iPhone apps for e-commerce stores, especially for uh, the Magento platform. Yeah. And uh, we we find that's such a powerful way for people to actually shop online while they're actually on the bus or on the train. Yeah. Well, so my, uh, my wife's got that uh, shop style one, and it's just you know all these different dresses and shoes, and, <laughs> and she saves you some money that way, doesn't she? I don't know where the savings are right. <laughs> <way. laughs> yeah. yeah. So no, um, I, I agree with you that the mobile space is certainly transforming business. Mm. So what advice would you give to uh, people who are going to start up in the digital space online store? What, uh, what is maybe your biggest learning? Look, I think at the start of our journey, someone said to me that um, the best thing you can do is think of the end result and work your way backwards. And um, look, in all our strategy, that's what we've tried to do. Mm -hmm. Because you, you need to think, where am I going to be at the end of this journey? And like, what is your goal? Because some people want to have a big global business. Others are just happy, you know, having a, a small business that pays the bills. Yep. So you really need to set that goal and set your roadmap of how you're going to get there. Because what you don't want to do is, if you build on the wrong, um, say, CMS platform, as an example, um, you know, if, if shopping cart can't handle, say, multi-currency or, or, ex or expansion into other markets or microsites, um, you don't want to have to rebuild your foundation of your house um, once you've already built the house. Right. So I think planning for where you want to be is, is, is very critical. So seeing where the future is for you and then yeah. future from day one. <laughs> That's okay. right. Well, thanks, Carl, for um, uh, talking to me today. It's, no been, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I believe that you have, uh, it's a unique uh, logistics portal that you offer to online stores. And uh, I think you've told me that it's actually uh, has no competitors in the space that uh, offer an alternative to what you do. So I look forward to uh, seeing the rest of your journey unfold over the next few years. No worries. Thanks, Thanks Carl, for coming along. Cheers. Okay.